Greetings everyone, you're here with Doug, aka The Real Link, and today, man, we have quite a lengthy video to show and discuss. While I again got to Sumeru a bit late, I was really focused on wanting to find all those special Dendrocoli? Dendrocoli? Dendrocolus? Dendro cabbages, yeah, let's go with that, and didn't resort to checking any guides or using the resonance stone. But fear not, if you don't have the same time, patience, desire, or will to suffer like I did, I hope my guide helps you in your search, even if it's not the first one out there, for 271 of 271 dendro cabbages, whether you're new to arriving in Sumeru in your Tibet adventures, or wrapping things up and preparing for Fontaine. Since this is my first Genshin guide I'm making that's this long, and regarding collectibles, it may not be perfect, and so bear with me. As always, if you'd like to clarify anything, ask questions, or if this helped you, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Now this video is already pretty long, so let's get right into it. First, a small note. While the Archon quest has you entering Sumeru's rainforest from the Chasm Tunnel, obviously you can cross over land at several areas as well to reach the newest region of Tavat. When I started my Sumeru exploration, several mini-gaming events occurred in Sumeru, so I went out of order, so to speak, in my collection. But with over 300 of the floating cabbages to find, chances are good that no one's order will be identical. Alright, let's begin. My first Andraculus ended up being northeast of the Ganda Hill teleport point, where a large tree root arcs across the path. Grapple up, and it's yours. For Andraculus number 2, near the starting ranger encampment of Gandarbaville, four leaf grapple points allow for faster travel around the area. A Dendraculus is found at one of these points. For number 3, west of Gandarvaville, a treehouse exists in a ruined stump. Climb to the top, and the dendro cabbage is inside. For number 4, approaching Sumeru City, there's a large bridge and waterfall. A Dendracolos is hiding underneath the bridge, so just glide down and grab it. For the fifth Cullus, this can be found on the way towards Sumeru City. A large stone block encircled with tree roots are one of the main puzzle features in the rainforest of Sumeru. While I don't believe I knew this at the time, a Dendro-based character hitting the root with Dendro will raise the stone from the ground exposing the boards or enemies underneath. Here, a Dendro Barrel Bomb Explosion accomplishes the task instead, giving us access to our Dendroculus. Traveling a little south, we find a Dendroculus hidden again under a root and snared stone. Cleaning up the Withering Zone, or Manara Corruption, will pulse a wave of Dendro energy, that giving felt... access to the Dendroculus <laughs> as our reward alongside a chest. <laughs> Heading further south from Fumara village, we reach Andravi Valley. Here there is a Dendraculus inside a large ruined tree. Fly down from above, or climb up and in, and it's yours. Huh? Dendracolus number 8, once you're back in Sumeru City with its twists and turns, you think there'd be more Dendracoli there, but that is not the case, except for one. Climb as high as you can go, far beyond the sanctuary of Surasthana, and you can find a Dendracoli at the tree's apex. For the ninth cabbage, west of Imara village, you can find deepening terrain with ruined trees around. This Dendracula is floating in mid-air, but a nearby tree hollow gives you a jumping point for it. For the tenth Dendracula, it is straight south of Imara village at a cliff point edge over the river. Take a running start, and this should allow you to just barely reach the Dendracoli, or use any character with airborne boosting movement, like Venti or Zhao. Huh? Huh? 
While in the introductory are in the request line, you will venture with Rana west of Vimira Village. Here as you drop down to the river's campsite, a Dendrakali is hiding in a carved out area behind where you entered from. Another Dendraculus is found not too far away in the middle of the river's path below some high tree roots. Climb up and glide off to obtain this one. This Dendraculus is right in the middle of Port Ormos Inner Harbor. Activate the Dendro Particle Time Trial Challenge on the eastern shore and several four-leaf grapple points appear spanning the water. Then Dracula is snagged while grappling in this challenge. Number 14 is an easy Dendracoli to find. It's northeast of Port Ormos Inner Harbor, near a ruin guard and canopy. Venturing further into the new lands, we reach Mauitima Forest. This Dendraculus is probably the first found here for people, as it is due south of the main Statue of the Seven, on top of a large mushroom cap. This Dendracula is floating above a canopy midair on top of the large hill directly above the Electro Regisvine. Use a Dendro character to activate the Cluster Leaf plant, which will cause it to shoot out a grapple point that will allow you to reach this one. This Dendraculus is near to the ground in the lower areas of Motiima Forest. It can be reached by gliding down from one of the large mushrooms, or jumped at from ground level. This time, our magic plant-based item is in the land of Aranara and plants. Once you enter Vanarana, an area with a spiky chunk of rock in the center is nearby with a four-leaf grapple point. Grapple here, and you can reach this Dendraculus easily. North of Vanarana's main statue, this Dendraculi is hiding in one of the Rhythm of the Gloomy Path holes, although you don't go inside this one for it. This Dendraculus was found well in the Vanarana dreamscape, but it shouldn't matter which version you're in. There's a particularly large hollowed out tree stump west of the main statue. Climb up or glide into its center, and a Dendraculi hides within. This Dendraculi is sitting above the confused Aranara, which you need to hit with Dendro based attacks. It's also on the hill above the Electro Regis Vine and is quite close to Dendrakali 16. Time to mushroom it up for the 22nd Dendrakali, located in the southeast Matiyama Forest. This one, while easy to obtain in the center of a mushroom flower, is quite high geographically, so climb the rock sides or be higher and glide down. For this northern Maitima forest, Dendracoli, use the many grapple points to first obtain altitude, as it is yet again on top of a mushroom. Swap to any bow-wielding character and activate the Dendrogranum, or Grana Spirits, and then strike the floating Vlaya, which are the green floating Dendro objects, to turn their centers from orbs to Dendro symbols. Trigger all three floating puzzle pieces, and the Dendro barrier is removed, granting access to the Dendracoli. For this Dendraculi, we're back to Gandarvaville. Despite being one of the first Dendraculi you'll see upon your arrival in Sumeru, you won't be able to access it for a bit. While on the starting quests involving the Aranara, you can use the Kusava Seed to repair the broken Dendro Monument, thus opening the Vine Wall to a lower cavern. A Dendraculus is found right as you enter. This Dendracula is found in the northeast of Vimara village at the top of a solitary stone column along with an Aranara. 
jump on the bouncy mushroom to reach it. Illusion shattered. Huh? Dendrocoli number 26 is probably the easiest dendro cabbage ever. It's right on the main road, south of Anurana, at ground level, sitting inside a hut. Far south of Anurana, this dendrocoli is located mid-air over a large waterfall. Simply jump on another bouncy mushroom to glide over and reach it. Here, number 28, the Stendrakali is found beneath the land bridge in the Visuda field, north of the Statue of the Seven. Exploring the ruins in the Vesuda field region, a couple of Dendrocoli are found here. The first is in the upper portion of the ruins at the end of a long tree root. Grapple and balance your way to obtaining this one. The others are shown later. Northwest of Port Ormos in the Andravi region is where you'll find Dendrocolis number 30. This colossus is found at the crossroads heading west, then northwest from Port Omros on top of some ruined huts. Grapple points are again your friend for this Dendrocolis. Southwest of Imara village, another withering zone exists in the Andravi region. Once it is cleared, there's a large machine gear and axle sticking out from the ground that can serve as a landmark for this Dendrocoli. Now that the greener is restored in this spot, jump on another bouncy mushroom to obtain this colus. Illusion shattered! Pam Woods is pretty dark and dreary upon arrival, but in the northern section, a withering zone is taking root. Defeat the creatures here, and a stone block will lift up automatically, hiding another Dendrocoli for you to collect. If you're drawn towards the large Varuna contraption in the center of the Epam Woods, it's a pretty enticing landmark to look at. While nearing the center region, a large waterfall pours into the lower basin and the Dendrocoli is midway down on a cliff edge. Glide down to the ledge or bounce up on mushrooms, and it's yours. Also, near the center of Epam Woods, the Dendrocoli is hiding below a large tree root. Either use an altitude boosting character to reach this cullis, glide down, or climb the tree roots to gain proximity that way. Another withering zone prize awaits in the eastern Epam Woods by defeating the encroaching Monera. Find this Dendrocolis under a rock-covered tree root once the zone is cleared out. While well, adventuring with the Aranera, some parts of quests take place high in the treetops. Fortunately, most large Aperam Woods trees have grapple points to get around or cluster leaves to hit with dendro-based attacks, and they will spit out more grapple points. As you head south towards the rest stop, you can collect one of the dendrocoli in midair while traveling. In the southern Aperam Woods, near the coordinates of Sun and Rain Domain, there's a small Aramite camp. This dendrocoli is tucked neatly behind all the shrubbery under the encampment platform. 
Thankfully, you don't have to bring the Amrites any shrubberies to obtain this colus. In the south of Apan Woods, for the 38th Dendroculus, another withering zone exists with the same defeat and collect methodology as the ones previous. The western Apan Woods has a withering zone and again functions identically to those previous. You interesting trinkets here. To the west of Port Ormos, near the Sumeru regional border map, lies a towering thieves' fort, near identical in design to others found around Sumeru for extraction device puzzles. While you may think this dendrock lies inside the fort, it's simply nearby, hidden inside a ruined tree stump. In the southeast of Epam Woods, near the river tributaries and cliff, lies another Tendraculus. While it's near ground level, I found it by gliding down into the hollowed out, overgrown tree stump. For the 42nd Dendraculi, this might be missed if you don't look up a little, but is otherwise easy to find. Travel to the southeast Epam Woods teleport point, or grapple up to it if it's not activated yet, and while in the area, use the bouncy mushroom to reach the tree canopy where the Dendrocoli is hiding. In the central Epam Woods, this Dendrocolis is found while on the Varunagatha quest to reach the branch and leaves with Arapandu. Upon arriving at the cave, this Dendrocoli is out of reach, but simply run up the sloped rock path up and around then glide to obtain it. Once reaching further in the RNR quest, the Yasna Monument is your next stop. Upon one of the hill ridges lies some stacked boulders as one of the many RNR tributes and records. A Dendrocolis is on top of it and easy to find. Traveling now to the East Vizuda Field, which is east of Anarana, or west of Sumeru City respectively, you can find a Dendroculus on top of a bear tree, with a grapple point giving you access up. While in Matayima Forest, during some of the Aranara quests, you'll travel to one of several underground caverns in the area. This one is in the western forest with an easily discoverable entry slope down and is probably the first you'll find. Large mushroom caps dot the upper and lower levels here with lots of grapple points. At the back of the cave on top of a mushroom, you'll find a nicely hidden Dendrocoli. Traveling far southeast from our last cullis, we reach more of Andravi Valley, which is east of Port Ormos and Vimar Village. You might also visit this area while on the cooking quests for Arafala, but the Stendrakali is amongst the easiest to find, sitting on a gear alongside the main road. Next, we travel southwest past Apam Woods to the ruins of Dari, where we can find the 48th Dendrakali on top of a large tree. Use the cluster leaf and grapple points to easily reach this one. Not far from the ruins of Dari to the east, we find another withering zone with a rock-covered Dendrocolis as our prize for clearing the area. Hmm. There are a few interesting trinkets here. Uh. 
while progressing in the ruins of Dari Aranara questline, the 50th Dendrakali can be found while descending into the lower caverns via grapple points or gliding downward. Also in the ruins of Dari and the Grove of Dreams large cavern, you can find a Dendrakali relaxing about by the large central tree branches. Simply grapple over, climb up, and another cabbage is off your list. Traveling back to Apam Woods and the Veranastra South, there's Dendrakali that is both mid-air as well as under a rock outcrop which is harder to get. There is no direct land access and the Colossus is too high from the water to swim to it directly. You can use one of the bouncy mushrooms with an electro boost bounce to gain sufficient height to glide over or use the other pieces of land to glide downward to reach this one. You can obtain the 53rd Dendrakalus by progressing with Arapanyu and transitioning from the Varunagatha quest into A Prayer for Rain Upon the Fika Land, as progress will open up the Varuna Contraption's central surface barrier. There's no way to grapple out, mind you, so this Dendrakala is unreachable until progress in the quest has been made. Should you somehow miss it in the glide down, you'll have to teleport out and try again. Heading north from Sumeru City, we reach Chetrakam Cave. The first Dendrakalus you'll find here is at the top of a perilously leaning stone column. Simply use a bouncy mushroom to reach this one. <laughs> Nearby to Dendrakalus 54, a trench and river and a depression leads to an Aranara sealed Dendrakalus with the obscene floating Vlaya green floating objects. Use the nearby Dendrograna to activate all three objects and the shield drops, giving you access to another Dendrakalus. While traveling in the higher lands of northern Sumeru, you might get close enough to the palace of Alcazarzare to see a Dendrakalus hiding at the highest tower spire point. Since the roof lines of most Sumeru buildings overhang, preventing easy climbing to the tops, you can always obtain this one by gliding down from the nearby steep hillsides. In the northwest of Shetrakum Cave on the hilltop, this one took me a little bit to figure out. While the nearby flower is for treasure, there's a Dendrakalus ping, but you probably won't find it. You'll have to switch to a dendro-based character to liven up the shriveled mushroom on the ground, then use the bouncy mushroom pad to bounce up. From there, a few grapple points and a tall spiral will take you up to a very high mid-air dendrocoli. While progressing in the Aranara questline, you'll meet up again with Aragaru in the northwest area of Chatrakum Cave. Like in the Pam Woods, sufficient quest progress is needed for the vines blocking the cavern where this Dendrocolis is to open. And, just like in the Pam Woods, this cavern has no grapple points back up, so be sure to catch the Dendrocoli as you glide down. In the northwest of Maitiima Forest, on the upper levels, a Dendrocolis is hiding inside of the branching mushroom caps. Just jump off, glide down, and grapple to the center of this and most of the other large mushrooms to obtain items in their centers. For Dendrocolis number 60, the famed out of reach Dendrocolis is frustrating for a while if you look at it from the upper levels. At the bottom of the forest though is a floating plant creature. If you hit it with pyro, it'll stop in place. But if you hit it with Electro, it'll pulse out a huge Dendro energy wave. This wave will revitalize the nearby blue hidden flower, which, when activated, generates a strong wind current upwards. Use this to obtain this sneaky Dendrocolis. Much like other withering zones, Dendrocolis 61 is under a rock barrier, which lifts upwards only after defeating the corruption nearby. 
and in this case, it's the Montana Forest's Heart of Corruption. Finding the cave entrance downward into this hidden space beyond the first time cutscene with Aranara is the most challenging bit of this area for sure. Now, having progressed far enough in the Aranara questline, you'll obtain the Vintage Lyre, which lets you play various songs learned throughout the region from various Aranara. You can return to the Yasna Monument's sealed green barrier and awaken the Junior Granima by playing the Rhythm of the Sprout. From there, you will be able to use healthy dendrogranum to hit the glowing boea, but the concept of bringing down the barrier works the same as others prior. Once down, go grab the 62nd dendrocoli. Gliding be faster. Hmm. There are a few interesting trinkets here. While traveling north from the Yasna Monuments Valley, a large tree holds a Dendraculus at its top. Simply climb up and grab it. Taking the road up to the north even more, we reach the northern portion of the Ashavan Realm region. There's another withering zone that needs attention, and again, your reward is a Dendrocolus. However, this time it comes from the Dendro Pulse awakening a shriveled mushroom rather than lifting a rock. Go bounce up for a bit, and this one's yours. Hmm. There are... Shine down! Southwest of Samira City lies the Yas of Dahapul, and further southwest of that was my next Dendrocolus on top of a hill. Should you shrivel the bounce pad mushroom with Pyro, as I had done on this example, just use Dendro to give it back some life and bounce, and this Dendrocolus is up for grabs. Incinerate! There is no escape! Not too far away from number 65, the Azadaha region has its very own withering zone to call its own, including, you guessed it, another Dendraculus reward for eradicating the filth and using another bouncy mushroom. There is no escape! While adventuring over into the Devantaka mountain region, you'll catch sight of a lone Dendracula somewhat I've dubbed Gear Island. While you could probably reach this by gliding down from the tall cliffs and land around this area, it's far easier to use Dendro on a cluster leaf flower, which will spit out a grapple point to the Dendracula area.
While in the process of obtaining Devantaka Mountain Ruin Golem Entry Seal Puzzle Parts, you'll visit the Vimara Village Secret Base Underground. Use the rhythm of Vamadha to spin the Aranara Seal to the open position, and while entering the cavern, a Dendracolus is in the narrow path. For the 69th Dendracolus, this one can be found in the first large cavern under Devantaka Mountain's Ruin Golem, near Jazari and Arkaraikan, at the Golem's outer door and puzzle. Go to the side of the cavern and use the bouncy mushroom to get the Dendracolus at the cavern's ceiling. Nice indeed. While obtaining the pieces of the Ruin Golem door puzzle, you'll travel back to the large underground pond. Complete the puzzles here to drain the pond to one of the lower stages, revealing a Dendracolus. Northwest of Port Ormos, there's some ruined junk along one of the hillsides. Simply run along and collect the Dendracolus in the gear center. While adventuring around Devantaka Mountain's Ruin Golem, you can find this Dendracolus in the overgrown finger joints gap. You'll have to climb up, then glide down into the recess to find this one. If you can't find it at first, you may also need to check after activating the central control hub's arm from the quest after powering up the relays. Everything is negotiable, except overtime. Traveling up the arm, you'll find the next Dendracolus under the left shoulder of the golem on a steep hillside. The final Dendracoli in the immediate area is found at the center of the Ruin Golem's laser eye on the outside of the Golem. It'll repeatedly ping as you do the quest inside and might drive you crazy thinking there's a path or a corner you'll miss, but nope, outside. Use the bouncy mushroom and climb to obtain this one. While in Vanarana, take one of the side turns and you'll descend into a fertile field where a side quest for Aranarkula's garden exists. There's also a Dendracolus right inside the Aranara house. For Dendracolus 76, we'll be heading back to the northwest of Epam Woods and the Fane of Ashvatha quest. You'll need to play Rhythm of the Sprout at this cave entrance to open the vine wall. A Dendracolus is tucked in the cave right as you enter the main path. Fort Dendracula 77. In the northeast high cliffs of Devantaka Mountain, there's a musical flower that might be a bit puzzling the first time you see it, since you won't have the song yet, but can hear the chime of the nearby Dendracoli. You can attain it by accidentally clipping the geometry. I tried plunging unintentionally and it worked, but also by returning to this point once you obtain the song, Rhythm of the Beastly Trail, which activates the flower and then the rock disappears.
Thankfully, this Dendrocolis, also in the northeast area of Devantaka Mountain's high cliffs, isn't as finicky. Simply climb the giant tree and collect this one. Go to the far southeast and reach the peak of Devantaka Mountain, and you'll find this Dendrocolis at the highest tree limb. In the southeast Devantaka Mountain region, on the flatter bit of land, there's a lone Aranara barrier with a Dendrocolis inside. Pick the sweet flowers nearby, and they'll lure some Whopper flowers and enemies to challenge you. Defeat them all, and the barrier is removed, granting access. Heading further northeast in the highlands, we find the second Aranara Green Barrier. This one uses regular Dendrograna and Balea targets to bring the barrier down. Just use a bow character to hit each target and open it. Repeat for all of them, and this Dendrocolis is yours. The 82nd Dendrocolis might be considered far northeast Devantaka Mountain, or even South Chasm, but it's pretty far off the path regardless. You'll find it sitting in an easily reachable range, inside a branching tree. Also found in northeast Devantaka Mountain, this Dendrocolis is easily found in a path right above an Aranara hut. For reference, map-wise, it's straight above the A.M. Blight Drake's cavern. Heading to the northwest of Devantaka Mountain on the high cliffs, we find a Dendrocolis tucked away in a ruined hut. Collecting is easy. Climbing here takes a little bit. We now travel to the far west of the Vasuda field, southwest of Anurana, where another withering zone awaits. Just like before, defeat the corruption, and you'll find a raised stone block nearby, granting that access to a Dendrocolis. Pretty good. Northwest of Pardestii, you'll find a Dendrocolis hidden under a root slurred stone, as is common with many others in Sumeru. Travel further north, and a Dendrogranopod can be found for your bow users to utilize to raise the stone nearby for this one. For Dendrocolis 87, this is a multi-step tricky one. First fly northwest of Pardestii and find one of several cave entrances under the mountain. Fly all the way down and you'll find a dreamscape along with two large dendro wall barriers. Enter the dreamscape and collect all 15 phantasmal seeds. That felt... hmm... pretty good. Once this is done, the barriers will open allowing exploration of the bottom cave level, which is shaped in a Y formation. You can find a treasure chest as well on the mid-level, which seals itself off until enemies are defeated. Once this is done, vines blocking much. another entrance past the barriers opens. Continue forward into a large water-filled cavern with a few ledges and a large tree stump covered in moss. The Dendrocolis is on top and to the side of the tree stump.
Illusion shattered! For the Dracolos 88, this one may also be missed when visiting the waterfall ruins in West Vesuda Field for the first time. However, one of the Aranara quests will bring you back here. The area also has the infamous sunken teleport point seemingly out of reach at the bottom of the river. In this case, it is not a song that decreases the water level, but a four-trigger Denro stone puzzle. Two of the four are in the cavern ruins amidst the rubble, stone, and roots. The other two activation stones are hidden behind Dendrogren and scribed rock barriers, but no Dendrogren is are in sight at this ruin level at all. is to use a dendro character such as Kole to hit the rock encased by the tree roots and it will rise up, revealing the dendro Grenon pod. You can't run. With this, it's now easy to find the other two dendro statues to activate all four points. Once all monuments are glowing, the water lowers deep enough to reach the teleport point, bottom ruins level, Fane of Ashvatha, and another Dendrocolus. While progressing through Old Vanarana and getting nearer to the source of the corruption, there's a Dendrakali again hidden behind a rock which will raise after hitting it with a Dendro character. Clearing the nearby withering zone also helps, as corruption fills relatively fast in this area. <laughs> Returning to Vanarana, you can find a 90th Dendrakalos by visiting the underground tunnels to the southwest. Near an Aranara house lies a Dendrakali near some plants. <laughs> For Dendrakali 91, under the large hill near Vanrana, there's a twisty cavern filled with ruins, some dendro monuments, and a withering zone. Like before, clear out the withering zone, and that will cause the corruption to go away. Activating the dendro monuments will also grant a hidden chest reward. Once the water is drained, a dendrocoli can be found in the previously water-filled lower area. Yeah. <laughs> 
this dendrocoli is tucked far away south in the Ashevan Rome region, right where the forest decays away to desert on top of the mountain and snared by thorn vines. You can find a dendrocoli if you climb to the very top of the area. For Dendrocoli 93, near Sumeru City lies Chinavat Ravine and a waterfall. Simply glide down and you can find another Dendrocoli floating midair before you land. In the northern Epham woods, a tucked away withering zone exists under one of the great trees. For the sake of collectability, however, it's easy to get the Dendrocolus hiding in front of the withering zone's entrance at the base of the tree. <laughs> to the northwest of the Yasna Monument lies another withering zone. Like many of the others, this too offers up a dendrocoli under a stone covered in roots once the corruption is cleansed. That felt... Hmm, pretty good. Similarly for Dendrocolis 96, in the far west Ashvin Rome region, another withering zone exists, with another Dendrocoli reward awaiting. I suppose it wasn't too much trouble. To the far west of the Yasna Monument lies a great chunk of land split in half, with a towering minaret ticking precariously close to collapse. At the very top of its spire lies a Dendrocolus in wait. You can use the four leaf grappling points to reach this area relatively easily. The 98th Dendrocoli will probably be out of order for others, but since I found the time challenge giving the achievement of a magic carpet ride into the desert, the dendro particles led me downward towards the Dune of Steel. Here, the Dendrocoli waits on top of a ruined golem structure. You can't run! While adventuring in this area, I stumbled deep into the large chasm before me known as the Debris of Penhave. While the ruins, restrictions, and angry triangles were all new to me, the wonderful sounds of floating cabbages were not. Glide down from the surface or climb up the steep walls of the ravine to obtain this Dendrocoli in midair. Finally, after progressing through Sumeru's Archon quests enough, I have finally arrived in Aru village in time for Dendrocolus 100. Here, it lies on a home rooftop which you can get by climbing nearby. To celebrate Dendrocolus 100, and if you've watched this far, it's time for a pun. So if Razor was from the deserts of Sumeru, where would he live? Aru village. Also, while in Aru Village, you can collect another Dendrocolus by the Northwest Building. Climb up the intricate sides, and it's in the center.
Near our village to the northwest lay some towering rock formations. Midway up these, there is a dendracoli tucked inside a vertical hole that one might not see from the surface, and certainly not from looking at the formations in the distance. You can glide in and drop down to collect this one, or, while venturing at the bottom, grapple upwards to reach the oculi. Passing the first cliffs of Aru village to the west, there are a lot of grapple points to speed up travel in the desert. Near these points lie a dendracolus up on a rock. Further to the west, in the land of Lower Satik, lie more Hoodoo rock formations. If you grapple and climb to the top of one of the highest near Abju Road, you can glide down onto a plateau and collect the Dendraculus behind some crates. Back to Sumeru's rainforest, we have the southeast portion of the Vesuda field, where the jade plume terror shroom boss lies in wait. At the surface level, there is a Dendraculus in midair near the teleporter path to collect. Near the Jade Plume Terror Shroom's lair, there is another Dendraculus in the main cavern tunnel close to the surface. In this particular case, I found it by going up from below, though down from above is much faster. I've shown both perspectives, however, just to help out. Where the border of the forest meets the desert, the wall of Samuel rises high to protect the lands. To the southwest of the ruins of Dari are one of the Aranara Hollow creations, where you'll see the Dendraculus ping on the map, but you won't find it on the surface. Play the rhythm of the gloomy path to open the hole, and the Dendraculus is at the top of a rock pillar inside. While progressing the quests of the desert and our conquest, you are led to the Dar al Shif al Azhar hospital ruins, where a Dendraculus sits on top of a breakable rock mound leading to a cavern below.
during your exploration of the underground ruins of Dar al Shifa. One of the destroyable rock walls leads to a side cavern where a chest awaits. Tucked even further around the corner and somewhat hidden from first sight is the next Andraculus. After passing through the exit of the underground tunnel, she'll find yourself in the, the Mud Oasis, where rare water exists instead of just the mud. Up in the trees, however, is a great place to be, and that's where the Ceres Dendraculus is hiding. Traveling back to Ganervaville, this is probably one of those Dendraculi that rates as obscure. First, climb the cliffs near the Statue of the Seven, then grapple to the top of the vines holding the homes and huts of the village. From there, even more grappling must be done to go higher into the treelands, and finally, at the very top, lies a hidden Dendraculus. Pretty good. For Tendraculus 112, we're adventuring back to the desert's midlands, where we see some imposing ruins to the north of Aru, with an incredibly deep, foggy pit, with an invisible barrier as well. Obviously something's hiding here, but that will be for later. For now though, the Tendraculus awaits on the top of the Eye of Sands, aka the Kaj Nisut Outer Walls. While progressing the main story, Al Haytham will take you to an Aramite hideout to discuss canned knowledge and more. Nearby to the space on top of the rock features is another Dendraculus, but thankfully there are grapple points to get you up the outward jutting walls. For Dendraculus 114, near the gate of Kaj Nisut, you'll find a new Sumeru type of puzzle, a manifestation mechanism. Activate this and guide the orb to the next beacon point, and keep moving along the route. Once at the end, a chest awaits near a decimated tree by the howling desert winds of Mount Damavad, and a Dendraculus is up for grabs here as well. A few interesting trinkets here. Moving westward, we reach some magical inscribed runestones to match up near the large Tanit Statue of the Seven. Nearby are some ruined walls and trees where the 115th Dendraculus awaits. Back to the rainforests of Sumeru, we start looking at the Withering Zone watchtowers scattered throughout the area. In the far west of the Ashven Realm are one of the watchtowers on a hill. 
You can climb the tower to search for withering zones, but you may need a character who can boost, such as Venti or Xiao, to reach beyond the leaf overhangs. Fortunately, if not, there is a bouncy mushroom on the ground level near the tower that will give you the height to reach the Dendracolus. Progressing to some of the side quests and stories in the deserts of Smeru, we discover a band of Eremites who have fallen down Abdu Road's pit while exploring some ruins. Also at the bottom of the pit is a Dendracolus in the raised area. For Dendracolus 118 and many beyond, they are tied to the side quest Lost in the Sands, accepted in the Eru village to find some missing Eremites and academia researchers in the desert. This will take you to Abdu Road in Ravine and deep into some of the ruins of King Deshret, where many Dendraculi are deeply hidden. Dendraculus 118 lies above an elevator shaft of the Abdu Road ruins once you pass the entry hall and is easily obtainable. Descending into you the ruins run. and twisting hallways leads to an area with a few predatory shooter turrets serving as a small gauntlet. A statue of a jackal in the side recess has a Dendraculus on top while crossing the area. Once you venture through the Abju Road Temple, you can find the next Dendraculus on top of the Grand Exit Area Wall. Climb up on the ruined walls and stones to find this one. While exiting the ruin's other path, you come to one of the tall towers dotting the desert landscape. Originally I thought they were places of worship or something else, but they all appear to be water pumping controls for the desert. Reaching the main or top floor from underground and activating the pump will give a cutscene of water returning to the land. The exit door opens and a Dendraculus awaits before it. Heading back to the Abju Road ruins, Dendraculus 122 through 124 are all locked behind a restricted access elevator panel. Once having obtained level 1 sun clearance from King Deshret's mausoleum, you can return to this space and activate the right hand elevator. Traveling to level B1, a Dendraculus awaits in the hallway below. Dendraculus 123 is near 122. Travel up the stairs to a T intersection. Turn to the left to find a destroyable rock wall. Go up the many stairs to level 1, and a Dendraculus awaits on an elevator platform in a large vaulted room. In the same chamber, after solving the puzzles there, you can go to the far side elevator and take it back down to level B1. A Dendraculus is located mid-shaft, so stand in the center of the elevator as you ride it down to obtain it. <laughs> Traveling southward, we reach the nearby Dune of Illusion. To the east of that are where tall cliffs of the land of Satika lie. Thankfully, this next Dendraculus is simply located in some trees at the base of the cliffs. Huh? 
Before the Andraculus 126, far north of Aru village or west of Caravan Rubet, is the aforementioned Eye of Sands, aka the hidden temple of Kaj Nisut. There are many geographical rock fins or ridge tops in this area forming spikes. A Dendraculus can be found at the top of one. Traveling back to southern Sumeru's rainforest, we reach Port Ormos. To the east of that is a depression on the map that's a small channel or valley. Travel up this tucked away strip of land to find an Aranara shielded Dendraculus at the southernmost spot. Play the rhythm of the beastly trail to drop the shield and obtain your prize. Fort Andraculus 128. South of the Sobek Oasis lies the tall rock formations of the land of Upper Satik on the outskirts of the Hippostyle Desert. Here at Andraculus lies far above the land in midair. You could use the nearby teleport point to reach it relatively quickly, or climb and grapple your way up, then jump off a cliff and glide down to obtain this one. <laughs> Also in the highlands of Upper Satik, several cliff layers present varying rewards and difficulties traveling around, especially vertically. A Fatui camp exists amid these ruins with a gravel point nearby. Climb on top of the encampment's metal exhaust to obtain a Dendraculus. Near another pumping station called the Tower of Betrayal in the upper Satika Desert lies a Dendraculus tucked away in some dry tree roots. Well, it's findable on land easily enough, you can also glide down from the tower here to obtain it. Don't we have a job to do? Fort Andraculus 131, in this region of Upper Satik but further south, near the Valley of Dari, lies an Aramite encampment inside a skylit cavern with many wooden bridges. You can enter from the ground level, but it is more common to take the Mission Impossible approach since the Statue of the Seven is nearby the whole entrance from above. Either way, once you find the underground spring in this area, climb the nearby tree roots to obtain a Dendraculus. Fort in Draculae 132, we're traveling back with our caravan of lost researchers in Jade, and now have reached the Kaminu Temple section of King Deshret's Grand Constructs. Take the stairs up to the entrance and pass the tall rectangular entryway. From the sealed foyer, turn to the left, and a Dendraculus is hiding on top of a large ruined statue. Grapple up to it, and you can check 132 off your list. Once having explored the lower first floors of the temple, you can also quite easily reach the rooftop of it outside, as most of the main temple here is buried in sand. This Dendraculus is floating seemingly midair for a careful jump, but surprisingly, you'll land on solid floating ground of an invisible barrier, just one of many of Deshret's technologies. You'll see more going forward. Reaching level B1 of Kaminu Temple going deeper, you'll find the passageway splits to three paths. To the left from the elevator, south direction on the map, you'll find a chamber highlighting a ship of the afterlife or a relic of Deshret civilization. Climb and grapple up to the very top of this room, and a Dendraculus is waiting. 
In Dracolus 135 in the Kaminu Temple, is locked behind a rising sun stone symboled plate access panel, so higher clearance is required. To unlock this door, further progression must be made in the Lost in the Sands research quest, which takes you to King Deshret's mausoleum, similar to the Dracoli 122 to 124. Reach the third level of the pyramid through the Lost Sands story and access to level 1 sun clearance will become available. Upon returning here to Kamini Temple, the access panel will glow blue so you can now open the door, grapple past the floor gap, and collect the Dendracolus. Traveling northward into the Hypostyle Desert, we reach the Dune of Kurosis, which is northeast from the King Deshret's mausoleum. Here, a color-changing crystal allows or denies access to the invisible barrier sections throughout this dune. Toggle the crystal to blue, and the wall in the lobby disappears, granting access to a Dendracolus. <laughs> Near the Hypostyle Desert Statue of the Seven lies a large butte. Travel around an upless rock formation via the grapple points, and you'll find a Dendracolus toward the top. Somewhat near Dendracolus 137 in the eastern Hyperstyle Desert lies a wind current. Take it upwards and follow the rings west and north to a Dendracoli floating high midair. Having made some progress, we finally advance to King Deshret's mausoleum, otherwise the Big Pyramid. Here we find our first Dendracoli pretty easily. From the front, it's simply tucked in the corner, beside a buried and ruined wall. Dracolus 140 might be obscured to some, if finding it from the top levels, but since Genshin encourages roaming, I found it pretty easily. Simply climb up the sides of the steep lower pyramid to the indented center, and the Dendracolus hides in the slanted depressions at the top. For Dendracolus 141, near the Dunes of Steel teleport point and the Ruin Golem, up on the slopes lies a ruined stone building that Hellacher will now camp in. On top of the ridge nearby lies the Dendracolus. Traveling west to the Temple's Forsaken, there are a lot of ruins buried in the sand with chunks missing everywhere. Near the temple walls lie one of the Dendracoli in this area. While going to the lower areas of the Temple's Forsaken, several tunnels permeate the rock cliffs nearby. Gliding or grappling down to the entrance of one of them also nabs us at Dendracolus in plain sight. Mm. 
A little off the main paths, I didn't find the 140th horse in Dracoli until later on for commissions. Here, it is seemingly out of reach at the underside apex of a rock formation without a grapple point. You can always travel alongside the cliffs to run upwards on the true routes, then glide down or jump from above if you travel that way for this Dendraculus. For Dendraculi 145 and 146, these two Dendraculi mirror each other on the main floor of King Deshret's mausoleum. As you circle around the halls while most likely on opening the sarcophagus quest, two of the four activation points are blocked by red barriers. Grappling up to the control panels for them also snag a Dendraculi on the northeast and southeast barrier sides respectively. For Dendraculus 147, once you reach clearance level 1, the exploration quests guide you into a one-way door with a teleporter point beyond as you plummet from the third floor to roughly the B3 level into a large sprawling cavern with a few slopes and tunnels. Ruins high above this cavern space lead to a treasure chest room, but grapple points at the statues nearby allow climbing up the otherwise inaccessible area for a Dendraculus. Traveling out of the mausoleum, we go south beyond the Dune Evolution to almost the regional border and find some lone, sand-filled ruins. Lots of blue invisible walls stop us from free roaming. Three pyro monuments lock out a Dendraculus to us. Simply ignite them all, and another green statue item is yours. For Dendraculus 149, traveling back to the Dune of Illusion, while you'll discover the algorithm of semi and transient matrix of Overseer Network Boss within, that's not quite what we're here for. Instead, a time trial particle challenge exists near the front entrance of this dune. Grapple and fly around as you collect the particles, and as you proceed in this challenge, you'll collect a Dendraculi mid travel on the dune's roof. For Dendraculus 150, back to the depths of King Deshret's halls we go, and while you descend greatly from the caverns before roughly the B5 to B6 level, the stairs to Opet's Hall throne room will take you back up in height. At these lower depths there is naught but a mix of cavernous stone and temple ruins that intertwine for a labyrinth of decay. On top of one of the columns in these ruins lies the Dendraculus. Branching out from the path towards Opet Hall takes you to the Tomb of a Thousand Ruins, where many jagged cliffs and large statues remain. You can grapple to the top of one of them for a Dendraculus. Taking one of the branching paths in the mausoleum will lead you again upwards to level B1, where a Dendraculus taunts you to snag it. However, an invisible floor serves as a partial barrier, preventing at least some climbing directly. You can glide hop over from the walls and snag it as I did, or more properly, solve the primal hourglass sands puzzle to generate a chest and a grapple point for easy reach. Yeah. 
since we're around Dendroclus 150, it's time for another pun reward. I mean, 152 has more footage I can put this in, so bear with me. While sightseeing in Deshret's tomb, I do have to say these statues are pretty emotionless. In fact, you could say they're stone-faced. Come on now, don't give me that look like I'm Sino Incarnate here. I'm just your Dendraculus tour guide. By the way, did I ever tell you about the time a scarab got lost down here? No? It really had to wing it to get itself out. So you know, King Deshret must have really kept his construction industry quite busy back in his heyday. With all the holes in his temples, you could say he'd be one to really dig the occupation. Hold up a minute, you're telling me he never even finished this place? Nope, the whole thing is still under construction. You have to expect that after paying your workers a pittance. I suppose it wasn't too much trouble. For Dendroclus 153, return to roughly the B1 or level 1 area once you gain clearance to access Opet's Hall throne room during your mausoleum splunking, and a cutscene will play, showing you that the fabled Akaj Nisup Temple is your next step of progressing this giant side quest. Don't run off just yet though, as the Dendroclus is hiding at the back around the large wall partition of the throne room just as you step into the viewing area for the Great Hall of Truths. The torch puzzle, however, needs significantly higher clearance, and so you'll have to return later for that. Right near the western hypostyle desert's teleport point lies a tall wind current. Ride it up and you can glide and collect a Dendracula here. Pretty straightforward. Void in Dracula's 155, we now travel to Kajnisa and begin solving the trials for temple access. A Dendraculus is hidden in the southernmost trial challenge at the B1 level, Chamber Room, behind the large soldier statue. Solving the westernmost Kajnisa trial, we find this Dendraculae on the B1 level as you round the bend from a hallway to a puzzle chamber. A collapsed wall attempts to visually hide this cabbage from the player's immediate sight. Simply go around it and it's yours. Not too far from Dendraculae 156 lies the next one. As you reach the end of the puzzle chamber, you can progress left or turn to the right, where some mushrooms lie in wait, and you can find a chamber door opened to a dead end room. A Dendraculae is hiding at the door's keystone top inside the room. Hmm. There are a few interesting trinkets here. While in the vicinity of Kajnisut, you can collect Dendraculae 158, go back to the tall cliffs surrounding the now occupied gaping hole, leap off, and glide toward the main tower. Climb up to the very top or glide down to its roof and a Dendraculae awaits. While in Kajnisa solving puzzles and activation stones, you'll find this Dendraculae in one of the pathways of level B1, taking you down to level B2 in a blue wall invisible maze. There's no major issue here though, simply navigate yourself around the walls and this Dendraculae is yours.
For Dendrochilae 160, this was one of the oculi I kind of simply missed. West of Sumeru City lies a moderately sized island. At its top is a lone bouncy mushroom. Take a jump and a floating midair Dendrochilus is obtained. You can also easily get to this one by jumping from the sanctuary of Surasthana or higher points of the Academia. Dendrochilae 161 may or may not fall into one of the more obscure Dendrochilae for some. Near the Great Tree of Dream is Vanarana, but in the real world, to the east, on top of the taller hills, lies a tucked away withering zone. Defeat the corruption, and a bouncy mushroom activates, giving you the height to reach the Dendrochilus nearby. Illusion shattered! While exploring the very far west temples of the Forsaken, you can find it in Dracolus in the corner of one of the many cliff ridges. Grab a upper climb, and you can cross another off the list. Traveling further north and west around Mount Demovan, we find the 163rd Dendrochilus perched atop a rock finger outcrop. Either grapple to it, climb, or glide from the cliffs above for this one. I'll be out of order for this next one. While the Recollector's Path event with the Perilous Rouge was taking place at this time in my exploration, and I was running out of time, I ventured far northwest to the 3.6 region to participate. I didn't collect all Dendrachili here yet, but marked them for returning later. One I did collect, however, was found in the Hilochuro encampment, which is easily trouble. seen from the sandy, barren wasteland of this area's entrance. Progressing on the Recollector's Path event, I was introduced to the Order of the Skeptics camp and their leader, Negrijuna. While in this bridged pit, a Dendrachilus can be found as you grapple around and work your way upward. This next Dendrachilus is an oddity and had me thinking for a bit. At the Temples of the Forsaken lies a lone hourglass-like column buried in a desert, on top of which has a Dendrochilus. You can jump and glide from the Temple of Gurbad or the higher cliffs to reach it, as there is no ground-based way to obtain this one. Later on, however, as you discover the do? puzzles here, a grapple point is created should you choose to obtain it later on. Inside the Temples of the Forsaken lies Gurbad's ruins, with wings to the east, west, and south. While venturing through the east wing, you'll start on the first floor, fall down into a flooded section, but then climb back out of it as you ascend. While crossing into more solidly built areas of the temple again, you can find a Dendrachili on a tall statue's hands.
traveling to the west wing of Gurbad's ruin for Dendrakalaya 168, it is on the giant tree root as you descend into the cavern from the first floor. Next up, the south wing also has a Dendrakalaya and a large chamber at the end of the first floor. Strike the rune mechanism to rotate the gust of air to blow away the sand pile obscuring the cube switch. Once activated, a false floor is removed leading to the next level down and a Dendrakalaya. Once unlocking Lilupar the Jinn from her cavern prison, you'll be guided through a ravine exit filled with ruins, scaffolds, and eremites. On the top of one of the ruined columns lies the Dendrakalus, which you can reach by climbing. For Dendrakalai 171, it's somewhat nearby Dendrakalai 143. Remember the one that we collected from the tunnel entrance earlier? Anyway, this cavern, east of the Temple's Forsaken, contains another Dendrakalai higher up on the ceiling. A secondary route would take you above the cavern from earlier, where a drop-down hole exists with a Dendrakalus and a grapple point. I was intrigued by a smugly area around Old Vanarana once the Manara was cleared, went exploring, and found this Dendraculae randomly. Gain as much altitude as you can, and then glide to the far west of Old Vanarana, where you'll find a Dendraculae at the highest point of a ruined, twisted, spiraling tree husk. <laughs> Traveling east in the desert through the passage of ghouls, you find the next Dendraculus on this list hanging mid-air in a deep canyon road. Grapple and climb what walls you can to get onto some of the jagged rock spikes, then glide to obtain your next Dendraculi. Having a character that can gain altitude like Venti or Zhao really helps here. Further east, we arrive at the fabled Weenut Tunnels, where these desert burrowing creatures roam and nest. Conveniently, right at the smaller teleport point of Sands of El Azif, you can drop straight down into the Satika Weenut Slayer and also snag a Dendrakali hanging midair at the same time. <laughs> Descending into the Weenuts layer, we reach level B2 where a time trial challenge awaits. Activate it, blow up all the explosive barrels in time, and one of them will also open a wall cavity that was sealed otherwise. A Dendraculus hides within that revealed section.
travel further into the Weenuts layer to level B3's sprawling cavern for your next Andraculus. Use one of the cavern wall slants to reach a grapple point and position yourself near one of the openings of the cavern from the B2 level. Once high enough, a small jet out of a rock riddled with burled holes is your landing point. Climb on this rock and drop inside a hidden area to find one of the slightly more obscure Dendroculi. Venturing into the Beit al Mazam underground ruins beneath Mount Damavan, you can find it at Miraculous on the B2 level in a room teetering on the verge of collapse with a large section of missing floor. Climb and grapple up onto the large tree root to find the next Andraculus. For the 178th Dendrakali, travel to eastern Mount Damavad in the desert of Hadramaveth, where many rocky cliff abutments spiral inward. A Dendrakali lies at the top of the tree up one of the cliffs, but thankfully a grapple point can get you right to this one. Also in the eastern part of Mount Damavan, you'll find a Dendroculus involving a couple steps. First, find a Dendrogranopod and use that with a bow-wielding character to destroy several Dendro-sealed boulders, revealing a few Dendro monuments. Activate all four Dendro monuments to generate a powerful wind current and a treasure chest. Ride the current up and you can find a Dendroculus midair. That felt... Hmm, pretty good. Dendroclus 180 requires sufficient progress in the follow-up quest to visiting King Deshret's mausoleum, where he first met Jate at the Tenet tribe camps. Eventually, we progress to discover a sealed jinn named Milupar, who has the power to remove swirling wind currents. This Dendroclus requires jinn power level 1 to clear the orb and activate the Dendrogranopod, thus providing a method to destroy the Dendro-inscribed rock this Dendroclus is locked behind. Also in the northwest region of Mount Damavan, we find the next Dendrakali tucked midway up, or down, two large rock formations. Thankfully a teleport to the Basque al Sakur area is nearby. Where you can use the stamina flowers on the side of the cliff to climb up, I found it much easier to teleport to the area and glide down. Also in the northwest of the mountain, you'll see Dendroclus 182 pretty easily while you venture around this area of the mountain as it's floating in midair right between two precipices with nothing even remotely close to get you to it. 
Not to worry, though, as yet again, the invisible technology of King Deshra lends us access. Climb on top of the cliffs and near the dead tree. An invisible bridge lets you cross the cliff to this reward. Towards the north of Mount Damavan lies the Sands of Three Canals, a series of very deep ravines presumably once filled with water, but now only dust. Flying from the high mountain cliffs into this area lets you spy it in Dracoli or two pretty easily. Here, once it's perched upon a cactus top. This Dendracoli, while not obscure, is just a hassle to reach with steep cliffs all around. It is best accessed while progressing in the quest, the Dirge of Bilicus, when the Ruin Golem is in the second of three locations. Either eat some stamina food and climb a lot, or jump a glide from the Golem to the cliffs to reach this nested Dendracolus. Right in the north of Mount Damavad, on one of the highest ridges, are one of the ten Shrines of Depths in Sumeru. Also right nearby are gravel points to cross the lands below. Thankfully, a Dendracoli sits right in the travel path of a gravel point, making this an easy get. Descending into the second of three dried canal areas to activate Deshret's Glass Goblet, we find our next Dendraculus in Bat El Sakun's B2 level, behind a sealed door. A skylight room filled with tree roots is the location for our prize, which is easily obtained. Simply climb onto the tree roots, and this one is yours. I suppose it wasn't too much trouble. After passing several cratered and collapsed floors, a large cavern opens up at the bottom of the Ba'el Sakura ruins. On level B6, you can find the next Dendracoli sitting on a true root, while also solving a time trial dendropedical challenge in this chamber. Moving along, once we arrive at Wounded Shin Valley, this is as far as this ruin golem goes, and so thankfully, we have access to another Dendracolus. Use the invisible, desperate made hidden walkways to reach the very steep cliff sides, then climb or grapple up to gain enough gliding altitude. Fly toward the ruin golem's center eye for this Dendracolus. Yeah! Yeah! 
a little closer to where you'd start exploring Mount Dambavan, you can find another Dendrocoli to the southeast area on a ruined spiky clifftop. From ground level, it is easy to grapple up and snag this one. too far into the swirling desert mountain, this Dendrocoli might be slightly more obscure or found later for some. At Wadi al Maju, a dendro particle puzzle begins and it will guide you with grapple points into an ever steeper ravine downward, also revealing a Dendrocoli nearby. Climb the cliff walls and glide over to obtain this one. If you've gone much further in the Tanit J questline, you might find this colus toward the end of your journey instead. few interesting trinkets here. Also in the wadi is a Fatui camp at the bottom of the pit, and the start of more temple ruins, which are sealed by an invisible barrier from this side. A Dendrocoli is floating above, however, near a headless statue. Climb up the steep stone wall and collect. Just like Dendrocolis 190, you may discover this one later in your journey. Traveling back to North Mount Damavad, this cullis can be found at the top of a jutting pile of stone and dead tree. A grapple point again makes collecting it relatively painless. Next to Dendrocolis 192 is an Eremite hut, similar to those seen in the Tanit camps and other places throughout the desert. This time, however, there's a nice cabbage inside. While exploring the many rock levels of Mount Amazon, the northern area yields yet another cabbage for us. In one of the areas under Weenup Patrol, you can find a pyro totem puzzle, giving us a chest as a reward. Nearby, however, a dendrograna allows us to destroy a couple dendro sealed stones. A dendroculus hiding within is the real prize here. Towards the center of Mount Gamvan, to the northern side, is our next Dendrocolis. This time it's also sitting right on a cactus. Ouch! Thankfully this one, compared to some of the cabbages we found, isn't a thorn in our side for collecting. Also in the north of Mount Damavad is the 196th Dendrocolis. On the clifftop, an Animo monument sits alone and generates a wind current up once activated. But this height alone might trick you as it doesn't take you high enough to reach the Dendrocolis. 
Instead, this is a look up gamer moment as some grapple points are above the character's location. Grapple further upwards, then run along an invisible bridge path and collect. While exploring northern Mount Damaband, our next Dendrocoli is to the northeast of the Sands of Three Canals on the cliffside. While you can reach it from the lower mountain exploring, I found this one from gliding down from a substantial height. Either way it works. In the northeast area of Mount Damavan, towards the upper slopes, we find a dendro sealed rock barrier. Slightly south of this ridge, there's a dendrogranipod from which you can use the dendrograna to break the rock and collect this oculus. <laughs> Gliding be faster. The Draculus 199 is found deep underground below Wounded Shin Valley, the final resting place of our Ruin Golem conveyance. While the Golem itself will take you from the arm entrance to level B2, the caverns will go from level B3 to B5. Once you land, take the small dead-end path to the left, and there is your Dendrocoli. <laughs> we finally made it to Dendrocolis 200. Descending further, the ruins on level B6 hold another Dendrocolis in one of the small oasis areas where Lilupar draws energy from. That felt, hmm, pretty good. In Dracoli 201 through 203 are all found at the very core of Mount Damavan and the legendary Eternal Oasis. Well, oft discussed and never found, this mirage does indeed exist, and is a touching moment for Jade. Dendrocoli 201 is in a tree trunk. Dendrocoli 202 is in some reeds near the lake, or easternmost if looking at your world map. And Dendrocoli 203 is in the reeds as well, central Damavan if looking at your world map. Also, we're on Dendrocoli 201, which rhymes with a pun. Do you think Ginny have any sense of humor? I don't think they express it much. They just bottle it up. Maybe I was Sino in a previous life. Time to move on from here, because this place won't. Returning to one of the wings I hadn't visited yet in the expansive mausoleum complex, we've arrived at the Dune of Magma to the southwest. Solve the torch puzzles on levels 1 and B1, and glide down the large crittering hole to level B3. A Dendrocoli is obtained near the bottom of this hole. You might be able to climb the cliffs and glide over to get this one if you missed it on your way down, but I didn't try it. If you can't, teleport out and try again.
progressing deeper into the Dune of Magma, level B5 has some winding tunnels and a large mushroom cavern. While completing a Dendro Particle Time Trial Challenge, you can collect a Dendroclus on top of a large mushroom. Also on level B5, near some monuments and temple there ruins, a wall treasure. juts out that is also in ruins, giving us access to a room inside. <laughs> on the broken wall itself is another Dendroculus. This particular Dendroculus might drive you a little crazy near the Northwest Tempestyle Desert Pumping Station, as you can hear it nearby but can't find it, and it's not on the tower's roof. Instead, go to the Western Desert Teleport Point, glide down, and solve a particle puzzle while adjusting the fan blades on and off to activate the torch at the end of the hallway. Use the air currents and gravel points to eventually reach the pump from below, and a Dendroculus is at the door on the way out. For Dendroclos 208, the lengthy and interesting questline entitled The Dirge of Blucus, involving the Ginny Lilupar must be fully completed. This will power her up to level 1, allowing the dispelling of small atmospheric vortexes. Completing the follow-up quests, The Falcon's Hunt and Apocalypse Lost, involving Tadla and Lilupar, will power up the Jin to levels 2 and 3 respectively. Only at level 3 can Lilipar dissolve the larger sandstorms on the mountain, which leads to a few more rune puzzles, and this perhaps frustrating Dendroculus. Getting to some of the more obscure Dendroculi in the deserts, we now return to the debris of Pranhave while completing the Falcon Tanit quests and reaching the consecrated Red Vulture's Nest. Up the steep rock walls perched on a small boulder is a Dendroculus.
Likewise, Dendrogalus 210 in the Ruins of Gurabad also requires players to be on the third and final quest with Lilupar, named Apocalypse Lost, as these ruins are hidden by a rock wall and invisible barrier on each side respectively. A small invisible floor ramp maze needs to be traversed to reach the Dendrogalus, as a large false ceiling will prevent you from climbing to this one directly. To the very far northeast of the desert of Penhave, almost outside the regional border, is a locked Fatui base. You'll hear the telltale signs of the Dendrakali nearby the entire time, making you think that you'll have to get the quest and the key to get inside the locked cavern. But nope, right outside the rock wall tucked in the corner is the Dendrakalus. For the Draculus 212, it appears under the broken span of Lower Kaminu Temple on level B4. To access it, a double sun level 2 clearance is required, which is obtained from empowering the tablet through the desert quest chains. Returning to the mausoleum's winding underground paths, one area branching off from Opet Hall leads us to a huge excavation, where stone for the rest of the temple was probably quarried. Midway through the winding paths upward is a large scaffold. You can squeeze around and climb up, then glide to the Dendrogalus here, but it is easier to activate a wind current from an interactable rock pile on the ground. Like in Dracoli 213, another branching path from Opet Hall leads you up to the flooded Sekum Halls. First, align the elemental monument beams on each side to Hydro to bring the water level down. You can explore the bottom, but the fan's air current won't be strong enough to let you obtain the Dendracolus in the roof of the chamber. Instead, align the monuments again, this time to Enemo, and now you can ride the wind current up to Hythe easily.
keep in mind turning on the fan blade itself requires a clearance of level 3, which you should have by this point, but if not, you'll have to return later. While descending through the many chambers of Sekum Halls, take the elevators and open shafts from entryway B5 down to level B9, one of the deepest parts of the mausoleum. While descending, a double sun or level 2 clearance slate is required to stop the fan blade in a hallway, which will let you obtain the next Androcles. East of the Garden of Endless Pillars domain in the western Hippostyle Desert, or west of the Dune of Corosis, is our next Dendrocolis on a ridge I had missed. Simply adventure around this area and light the pyro torches for a chest, but you can also jump off the edge of the cliff to obtain the Dendrocolis below. For Dendracolus 217, you'll need to venture far south to the desert ruins and complete the puzzle loop for this Dendracolus. It requires a Tri-Sun or level 3 clearance to activate the fan midway through, which is obtained from exploring Sekum Halls, which means you might need to return to this area later in your adventures depending on how quickly you wander the desert. For Dendracolus 218, it is likewise found by completing the Desert Ruins puzzle loop at the very southwest part of the Hippostyle Desert. Pretty good. Returning to the mausoleum caverns, one of the paths leads you up a slope to a large underground space with a withered tree and a large underground withering zone. Clear out everything for a reward, but the grapple point and Dendracolus are accessible regardless of this area's condition. Hmm, there are a few interesting 
building trinkets here. Well, on top of the tall plateau that is Land Devourer Rock, you can find the 220th Dendrophilus just south of the nearby teleport point on a long tree limb. Glad over and find this next Dendrakali during some of the quests focusing on the Valley of Dari. I stumbled upon it when gliding down from high cliffs next to the Ruin Golem. At the southernmost part of the Golem on the map, up on a back port of some type, is your Dendrakalus. <laughs> Once inside Lamb Devourer Rock's Eremite base, there's a winding corridor to the left and a large temple room to the right. In the temple room, there's a Dendrocolis near the ceiling, which can be reached via grapple point, and then climbing and gliding on the tree roots. A primal hourglass upper level puzzle is here as well. While exploring Mount Damavan further to the northeast, the Dendrakali is perched atop a ruin guard on one of the many carved and jagged mountain ridges. There's nothing special to do to collect this one. In the southwestern part of Mount Damavan, much like Dendrakali 223, it is perched on one of the many spiraling cliffs of the mountain, but this time on top of a ruined windswept ridge in the Wadi Al Maju area. Wandering a bit into the far northwest of the desert's 3.6 area of Gavira Lahavart and the Rurikasha Oasis led me to get this Dendrakali out of order. Climb up the central large tree and you can reach part of the route where this Dendrakalus is perched on. In the western part of the Temple's Forsaken, as it transitions to Shaft of Shatrana, a pumping station can be opened from the outside. While a sand chute battle gauntlet exists in the large bottom level of the station, the Dendrakalus isn't down there. Instead, it's tucked away near the tower's top, but inside. Use a recessed grappling point near the magical device to reach this colus. quest Aferatu's Dilemma to research the Dari or Conrian machines of old, no one can be near because the golem's targeting laser is still active. 
Use it to blast open an access path on the mountainside, and that path will take you up into the arm and into the golem. The main hall is much like that of other ruined golems we've seen, and needs to have the central control room brought into check. A dendroculus is found in the wall partition in the main hall as well. it wasn't too much trouble. behind some gears, you can find Dendraculus 228 on the golem's lower level in one of the side rooms. Dendrocoli 229 and 230 are found in hidden caves on the map, accessible only by completing the Ruin Golem research quest and firing the main cannon against the Dari Valley walls to open up some areas to the southeast. One cavern contains a withering zone where a true gives you a foothold to obtain a Dendrocolis, and the other chamber has an elemental monument puzzle with a Dendrocolis floating nearby on a rock ledge. few interesting trinkets here. Right where King Deshret's mausoleum northwest corner is pointing is where you'll find Dendraculus 231, obviously one I totally missed until now. Simply climb the ruins and it's yours. There are a few interesting trinkets here.
Dracoli 232 and 233 are right next to each other near the surface level west wings of Deshret's mausoleum, but they have a steep clearance requirement of level 4 to activate. Actually, you could probably glide down from the high pyramid and bypass this lock, but I didn't think of that when doing it. Anyway, rising up with the powerful fan active grants you Dendrakulus 232 and a triangle activation prism. You can go over to the blank ground plate with the prism to spawn a primal hourglass, much like in other parts of Deshret civilization. Do the same for the area on the other side of the stairs, and then you can activate all three primal hourglasses to remove the ruined wall barrier to the 233rd Dendrakulus. That felt, hmm, pretty good. A few interesting trinkets here. Near the entrance to Gavira Lavavard, a domain named the Molten Iron Fortress is buried into the cliffside. Nearby are some slopes, however, to get yourself up on top of the outcrop. But Andropolis is sitting on top of a cactus there. While venturing through the Tamir Mountains Pass before reaching Tunigi Hollow, you'll find Andrakulus 235 on top of a plateau in a wooden post. <laughs> Dracoli going forward, you'll be interacting with the parry Sarush to obtain them. Using her special action of grabbing the reddish four-leaf grapple points while controlling Sarush, you can place them within roughly 70 meters of range from the player's location before the screen dims and Sarush returns to the player. Here, in the far west of Temir Mountains or the far south of Taniki Hollow, repositioning the grapple points lets you obtain your next Dracolus. Once into the hallowed lands of Givir Lahavard's Tanigi Hollow, Dendrakali 237, 238, and 256 are all relatively compact together, and with a lot of bloop alert sounds pinged on the minimap due to the parry for Rashi trees, they are somewhat easy to miss, as well as also being out of visual sight to an extent. 
237 is at least a little easier to get, sitting due south of Tinikahalo on a large grey crystal spike top, which you can just glide to. Andraculus 238 drove me a little crazy since there were many pings in the map at the same time, and this one is far out of visual sight. You can use Sarush's abilities to activate some platforms and grapple points to begin getting to this Cullis, then climb the steep cliff the rest of the way. Travel west to a small depression outcrop, and a Dendracula sits upon it. In the Sipapet Ravana Swamp, you can find this cullis relatively easily on a large thorny root via grapple points. On the cliffs of Tamir Mountains to the northwest of the valley is a steep cliff with gray spikes on top. A nearby Dendro Monument puzzle will reward you with a chest, but the Dendroclos is at the top spike yet again. Dendrocolis 241 is definitely more intimidating, perhaps, than outright hard. Go to the big spooky evil, TM. Central Taniki Hollow Core Barrier, and you can collect this Tendraculus easily at ground level. Really, don't worry, you won't fall in the hole. <laughs> to the northwest of the Gate of Zulkarnain on the high cliffs is where you'll find your next Tendraculus and not in the tunnels with the Abyss Herald battle. Use Sarusha's repositioning ability to make grappling to this oculus possible. While also on the rocky tops of the western mountains, there's a relatively flat sloping area with a small hill at your old encampment. Adendraculus is at the top of the hut outside. <laughs> Underground in the Hangi Afrasiab area is a large cavern with several branching paths and a large crystallized dragon looking skeleton. While it's a fossilized Wina, walking on the gray matter doesn't affect the player, so simply climb up to the spike top and collect.
Branching out in the underground cavern next to Dendraculus 244, you can go down a tunnel where some mayfly pods exist along with some large tree roots. A Dendraculus is at the top of those roots. Next up we have a Dendraculus located at the top of the Great Tree in the hills of Barsum. You can get to the spot over the ravine's land bridge and through the cliff paths, as it plays a pretty central role in the Carverina of Light and Shadow questline. For the tree itself, simply climb to its top to snag this cullus. Arriving at the Vorukasha Oasis Statue of the Seven, the next Andrakali is pretty easy to get. There's a grapple point to the west that will take you up to a collapsed wooden bridge, and after that, it continues to another grapple point with a Dendrakalis. <laughs> To the far northeast of Essipathiravana Swamp, following the river, there is a walled-in area where the quarry drum patterns are inscribed on the walls, along with a small central plateau. A Dendraculus is located here, but is out of jumping range, with no grapple points nearby. Maybe there's some other way to get this one, but I found gliding down from the nearby cliffs works just fine. You'll probably pass this Dendraculus when venturing to the Great Tree, but I chose to collect it afterwards. Right alongside the steep cliff path is a small tree with a Dendraculus sitting on it. Easy to get. If you follow the road and land bridge across the river from the Vorukasha Oasis, then go up the cliffside, you'll reach a thieves' hideout with an encampment. On top of the hut is the 250th Dendraculus. Your reward is no pun, because we're almost done.
for Dendracoli 251, you can always glide under the bridge and obtain this Dendracoli. However, a nearby Dendro Particle Collection Time Challenge with Bouncy Mushrooms also brings you up to this Dendracoli's height. Dracoli number 252 is a little taunting, but isn't too hard to obtain. Nestled in the rich scenery of Orukasha Oasis is a clusterly flower that is easy to miss. Simply attack it with a Dendro character like in Sumeru's Forest, and it'll spit out a grapple point, which you can chain travel to the floating midair Dendroculus. This colus in the East Wurukasha Oasis left me feeling a bit lost, as the nearby tree roots and flower platforms get you very close with air boosted gliding, but you still can't quite reach this Dendracolus. If you swap to Sarush, however, she can destroy one of the large amber rock formations, revealing a reddish grapple point you can reposition next to this Dendracolus. In the southwest of Urukasha Oasis is another Dendracoli to snag. This one is straightforward, being placed inside an overgrown tree with a small hollowed out section. Simply climb up and drop in to obtain this one. Climb on top of the steep cliffs surrounding Vorukasha Oasis, and you'll find Dendracolus 255 on top of a tree, right next to an angry consecrated raven's nest. Do some battling, then collect your reward. I suppose it wasn't too much trouble.
similar to Dendrocoli 237 and 238, this one is found in the eastern Tanigi Hollow amidst the gray spike formations. Use Sarusha's ability again to reposition the grapple point for this Dendrocolis. Dracoli 257 is in the west of the Tanigi Hollow, at the edge of such a prominent rock cliff edge that the land is easily visible on the map geographically. You can trudge up with stamina food and risk death climbing up the many tall rock faces in this region, or have it a bit easier by teleporting to the closest teleport point on top of the cliffs here, which would be the realm of Farkaret. Run along the ridgelines west and south, and then you can jump off to collect the Syndracoli. Don't miss now. Dracolus 258 definitely is off the paths a bit, but is an easy find once you hear the ping. Go to the very far south of the gate of Zulkarnane, where a flat desert depression lies. There you'll find a buried ruin golem control cabin core. Go inside of it and you'll find your next Dracolus. To the region's northwest lies the Samudra Coast, a refreshing area of water after seeing so much sand. While some treasures lie on the outer islands, a Dendracolus isn't as obscure here as it is closer to the coasts. Use Sarusha's abilities again to reposition the grapple point, and this one's yours. For Dendrakali 260 and 261, progress must be made in the Carverina of Good and Evil Parry questline with Sarush to gain access to the sealed portion of Gavira Lahavard's underground and yet another ruin golem. For Dendrakali 260, there is no direct path either via the walls or catwalks to this Dendrakali. After the defense training regimen is complete, additional four-point grappling stars will appear, which allows for easy access to this Dendrakalis. For Tendrakali 261, it appears the elevator to B1 for the Ruin Golem only functions after the defense training regimen has been completed, even if proper power is restored first for the elevator. But if you can indeed use it early, then you can obtain this Tendraculus either way. Take the elevator up a level, and you can find the Tendrakali next to a portcullis and treasure chest.
Once you open the Gate of Zolkranin after exploring the previous ruined areas in your quest to find the Farrix for the Order, you are led to the other hall of a ruined golem with a cavernous hole and dilapidated catwalks. Grapple around for a Dendro Particle Challenge and on one of the cliff edges, you can find it in Dracolus. Hmm, there are a few interesting trinkets here. Descending into the machine, you'll find a large vertical space filled with water and overgrowth. You can reach different areas with the many pipes throughout, then use the wind currents to reach the top of the chamber where a Dendragolus is hiding. Deep inside the ruined golem is a still active blazing foundry room. You can find the next Dendraculus by using the pipes to scuttle about and then glide near the smelter to grab this one. it wasn't too much trouble. Once venturing to all the different passageways and activating the backup power, the central elevator will become active. Take it down to level B2 where you'll have to jump from the center smaller elevator to a large cylindrical shaft elevator below. Also, below the first elevator is your Dendrocolis. While nothing colossal-wise are in any of the shaft's pockets all the way down and you can't ramble back up, you can always use the nearby main level teleporter to return here should you miss this Dendrocolis. For Dendrocolis 266, well, the Oasis story is done now, and I thought I would have found more Dendrocoli, but nope, it's time to backtrack and have fun figuring where I missed some. This one definitely takes the cake as one of the more obscure Dendrocoli. To the southeast of Old Vanarana's Cliffs is a particularly large rock formation. Climbing and grappling to the top leaves us with a bouncy mushroom pad, but a regular jump won't do it. This time, you have to charge the bouncy mushroom with Electro to give you the height boost to obtain this Dendrocolis. There is no escape! Compared to 266, Dendrocoli 267 is a derp on my end, as it's in plain sight right in front of my face kind of thing. Oh well. Anyway, if you're near Chetrakum Cave, to the southeast of the large hillside near the Shrine of Depths, you can find a Dendrocolis on an overhang of rock, easily obtainable via climbing, then gliding. Huh? 
how I missed this next one, I don't know. Near the central Ashaven realm teleport point to the west, buried in foliage, is an Aranara hollow, which you need the rhythm of the gloomy path to open. Once inside, the Dendraculus is found on the stalagmite top. Back to the more obscure Dendrocoli, this one was left over on the northeast of Mount Damavad and one of the steepest parts of the entire mountain overall. Glide to the cliff faces, then use stamina flowers or food to reach the required cliff level, midway up as it is a long glide, climb, or fall regardless of method used. Thankfully, a Dendrogranopod is nearby to easily break the Dendro-inscribed rock barrier on the cliff side, revealing the Dendrocolis. For Dendrocoli 270, I probably got very close to finding this one, but it ended up being overlooked. To the far northeast in the desert of Benhave is the last official Dendrocolis you need to max Sumeru's statue of the Seven to level 10 and get the last Shrine of Depths key and some achievements. This one's just at the edge of another jagged cliff edge, so climb up, then glide to obtain it. Finally, for the extra leftover Cullis, much like Animo, Geo, and Electro before it, the final Dendrocolis for me was back in the Vorakasha Oasis, to the southwest of the tree. This is another one that's floating off the cliff edge in midair, so you need to use Sarush to reposition the grapple point, then collect. A tip if you've just skipped to the end here or didn't watch the full guide. Zooming out on the map to see which areas are not at 100% completion might help you in your search for remaining Dendroculi and treasure if you don't want to use other guides or the interactive map. As for me, I really enjoyed this challenge, even if I got it done quite late. And now, right as I publish this, it's time to start Fontaine. Good luck everyone, and I'll keep posting my long playthroughs and also some Hydroculus videos as time allows. I hope this really helped someone because it took a tremendous amount of time, effort, and least of all disk space, about 190 gigabytes to create. I'd also like to take a moment to thank Batty, Aki, Turtle, and my Discord friends for giving me some desert tips before reaching Sumeru and for the encouragement while making this video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>